Good morning. Welcome to the continuation of the celebration of Easter, the celebration of life, of faith, and of hope. And I am glad that you're here this morning. Bless each of you. If you will rise for the beginning. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins, trusting that God will forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Faithful and just God, we confess that we are captive to doubt and fear, bound by sinful ways that lead to death. We have not loved you, sisters and brothers, as you have first loved us. Forgive us, God of mercy. Let your Holy Spirit work in us to change our lives and make us new, that we may know the abundant life given in Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. In this is love. Not that we loved God, that the God has loved us and sent the Son to save us from our sin. In the name of the risen Lord, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven, that the perfect love of God cast out fear, fill you with joy and inspire you to live for others. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now may the love of God and the peace of Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And we're also with you. It is tradition to share that peace with one another.
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Just because Pastor Freeze comes in doesn't mean we extend the peace. <laughs> I know, we can't help ourselves. I have a story for the youngins. I have a story for the youngins. Can, can you all come up? Come up close, right here. No, not, not that close. You don't need to be that close. That's, that's a little too much, Sarah. I need my space, too. <laughs> Good morning. All right, here's our story. You ready? Oh. This is about God's house. Have you ever wondered what God's house looks like? You ever wonder what God's house? Is your house really big, Alice? Yeah, I think your house is pretty big. Did you know that God's house is even bigger? God's house is even bigger. So this is about God's house. Jesus taught his disciples many things. Do not be worried or sad, he said. Believe in God and in me. God's house, are you ready to hear about God's house? God's house is in heaven is so big that everyone can have a room. Can you imagine a house big enough for everyone here to have their own huge room? Whoa. And then think about that, but everyone in the world, right? That there's a room for everyone. I'm going to get your rooms ready, Jesus says. Later, I'll come back to take you to God's house. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas and Philip looked confused. Um, what way do you mean, they said. Do you, do you all know how to get to God's house? Do you know what, what way to take to God's house? Yeah? Jesus said, I'm the way to know God. Because you know me, you know God too. I've taught you about, uh, about life with God and the good things God wants you to do. Pray and ask for anything, and I'll help you do it. Thomas and Philip smiled. We can follow you and do what you ask us to do. You are our way to heaven. We can live in God's house, too. Yeah. So today, what I like about this story is that this is from the Gospel of John, which Mr. Michael loves. And Mr. Michael is going to take you to Kid Zone today because Pastor Owens had another grandbaby born a couple days ago. Yeah, very exciting. So Mr. Michael is going to be with you today. And um, he loves John. And in John, Jesus says, I am, a bunch of different things, right? And so today we hear Jesus say, I am the way the truth, and the life. I am the way. And because you know me, you know where to go. You know how you need to live in your life, okay? Because you live your life like Jesus, with lots of love, right? Oh, I've seen you, Alice. You do, even if you don't always know it. Yep. But so I want to give you, do you, do you all like to read? Do you all like to read? Yeah. Do you like to read your story Bibles? Yeah? I know you like to read. And what's up, Sarah? Go ahead. Yes, I know, but now they are cut up. Can I give these to you to hand out? Okay, come on. And it has all of the I am statements, the seven I am statements in the Gospel of John. So sometimes if you're not sure who God is and who Jesus is, you can look at this to remind you, okay? All right, I think we're going to pray. Are you ready? Can you repeat after me? Can you all help us? All right. Dear God, we thank you so much for your promise in Jesus, in Jesus, that we know him, that we know him. So, we know so we know you. Help us Help to welcome others, to welcome others into, your house. into your house. 
in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, thank you. You want to go up to Kid Zone and to nursery with, yes. with uh, Mr. Michael? Mr. Michael, there is, we do have a nursery person. So if you want to, can you take Beckett to nursery? Yeah. Just drop him off at nursery where Miss Tori is already there waiting. He's like, no, I'm not, I don't want to take your hand. <laughs> So fun. All right. I do have some announcements for us today. <laughs> I have some announcements. First of all, welcome to Epiphany the God is Love Church. Our ushers are coming around with the welcome pads. Thank you very much, Bob. Bob is on it. Um, by all means, please uh, fill those out during the announcements and share with us any prayer concerns you have um, either there or in the pew cards that you see in your pews. Um, I do have a few things that are coming up that you should know about. One is that um, Just Off Broadway's Butterflies Are Free opened this weekend. They've already had two shows, and their third show is this afternoon at 3 o'clock. If you go um, before the show, I think any time before the show, as long as they haven't sold out, and get your ticket online, it's slightly less expensive than showing up at the door. Um, and so that link is in your e-herald. And then um, there is also next weekend, so you can still go next weekend at 8 p.m. on Friday or Saturday or Sunday at 3 p.m. Today, after the service, there is a special congregational meeting at 10 a.m. Uh, to vote on three property improvements. It is a one-item agenda, so it should go real quick, but we also want to make sure that we, we get there and get started. Um, there is a Zoom link. For those of you who are watching online, I know that Deacon Doug has put it in the comments. Very nice. Along with the motion so that you can read over that and make sure you're good with that, um, which Tom will read during, during the um, meeting. And then I think there's an event happening. Is there an event happening next Saturday? Yeah? I think so. Well, watch out. Here she comes. Do not let your hearts be troubled. My heart is troubled. Help! Help! We have the spring fling. We have like 15 partners. Everybody's handing out flyers. I kind of forgot to ask for volunteers. So everybody volunteer, because I'm a little troubled. Please help. It's only 11 to 2, and uh, you are going to be so welcomed, and all volunteers get free lunch. And if you want one, a hug. Um, kids, don't, we got bounce houses and obstacle courses and Motown music. Oh my God, from a really good band. This, not, this is like not, this, these guys are great. So please come, okay? Help, let my heart not be troubled. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, in case you want to actually affirm that you are going to help, there is a sign up out there in the comments, or you can put it in the comments and then Doug, because he's just so brilliant, Doug will actually transfer your comment to the sign up list in the comments, right? Yep, Doug is, I'm, he's just magical. Yep, there you go. All right, thank you very much. Um, I should also note that next weekend, in addition to the Spring Fling and Flower Mart, next Sunday is Mother's Day, so you get your flowers on Saturday, right? And then you're ready for Mother's Day on Sunday. And then on Mother's Day next Sunday, when you come to church, um, all the ladies in the church will receive a special handcrafted gift made by our very own Kevin Russell with Darlene's help. <laughs> Yay! So I have them. I have the whole, I, they're ready, in fact. I have them in my possession, ready to give out next Sunday. So please come and take delight in one another's company and in this special gift. And then as if that was not enough, uh, that evening, on Mother's Day evening, there will be a special concert by Miroslav um, Mikhailenko. Don't know if I'm saying that properly, but he's great. He's the pianist who was with us on Easter and was part of the piano dedication concert. The concert is free, but there will be a love offering because, you know, he's a struggling student musician. So by all means, um, offer him your love by your offering. And then um, I should just note that the indoor craft and flea market has been canceled. So our schedule is a little clearer. That is not happening on the 20th. So just put all your effort into next weekend, right? Yeah, good. All right. 
And now uh, we will continue with our testimony song. Well, good morning. I will just share with you briefly that, um, that we had someone lined up to do the testimony today, and then someone in his household uh, that was visiting with him tested positive for COVID, and so he is not here this morning. But I want to share with you just a brief testimony, which is that this morning I went to the band and I said, hey, any chance any of you would have a testimony to give? Very brief. And they all looked at me like, what? <laughs> right now um and uh and then and and buddy even very honestly said it's been a tough week <laughs> i don't know 
And then he came up to me during sharing the piece and he said, I have a testimony. I can't do it this morning because it takes more preparation than that, but I have a testimony to give. And so he is going to give his testimony um, a couple weeks from now. And we have a testimony lined up for next week. And Mark still is going to do, Mark Humphrey is going to do his testimony. And just know that if you ever have a testimony to give, there is space and a place for you here to give your testimony. Um, we want to hear it. We want to see how God is moving among us. And so let's, let's sing again a bit of All Who Are Thirsty. A reading from St. Paul's first letter. Like newborn infants long for pure spiritual milk so that by it you may grow into salvation. If indeed you have tasted the Lord is good. Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in scripture, see, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble like a rock makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a holy priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, 
in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory to you, O Lord. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you to go, that I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again, and you will take, I will, and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I'm going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you know me, you will know my Father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I not been with you all this time, Philip? and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the good works that I do. And in fact, will do greater works in my name than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. In my name... You ask me for anything, I will do it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Hey, Aiden, Hayes, if you want to go back, the, they're back in Kid Zone. It's up to you all, of course. All right, that's cool. <laughs> well, Yesterday, I got to spend much of my day with the high school youth of the Lutheran Youth Organization. At the last meeting each year, which happens each May, we always bless the graduating seniors. And we were a pretty small group this year because it's been a strange couple of years. Um, and so we actually had time this year for each person, if they wanted to, to say a few words. And so they were invited. And so one of the seniors was kind of um, pushed up by her fellow seniors. And she, um, she did, in fact, say a few words. In fact, she said more than a few words. She actually climbed up into the pulpit at Salem Lutheran Church in Catonsville. And she gave basically a sermon, <laughs> at least in length. A testimony, you might say. And she reflected on her four years in the Lutheran Youth Organization. At one point, further on in the testimony, what she did was amazing. And it, it gave us, it made us all kind of scratch our heads. But what she admitted was that she um, has really struggled with her faith. In fact, she said that, um, that for a while there, she knew that when, when they were sharing God moments, which we do pretty regularly, um, she was simply lying, <laughs> right? Like she said, uh, like for example, um, I said, oh, I saw a butterfly earlier and that showed me um, God's creation. And she said, not only did I not see God in the butterfly, I didn't even see a butterfly. <laughs> I just felt like I had to say something. 
And then she talked also of a feeling that other youth sometimes have in such roles. She was particularly in a leadership role as a leader among leaders in this leadership organization. And she said that sometimes she had the sense of imposter syndrome, <laughs> that that people were expecting something of her and she had to almost pretend like she was more than she was. She is, of course, far from alone in such feelings. Even the sainted Mother Teresa admitted in her diary that was found after she died to not feeling God's presence for decades despite doing incredible work, greater works than these, you might say. She did not feel God's presence. This morning we hear Jesus' farewell address, and I don't want to project too much on the disciples as they are hearing these words, but they do not seem ready, right? Thomas, who later becomes known as Doubting Thomas, cannot even make sense of what he is saying. The words don't make sense in his mind. We do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? And yet Jesus promises not only that they do know the way and they do know the Father because they know him, but after Jesus has died and risen. They themselves will do greater works than these. But how? We hardly believe. We hardly know what this all means. How can we do anything? And today, goodness, is such a thing even possible? Isn't the world too horrible in our for our pitiful attempts at faithful kindness and justice to make any real difference? What if we, like that high school senior who admitted she lied about something so simple as seeing a butterfly, lack the faith to pray? to worship, to hope, let alone to change the world. You, do you all know the Nicene Creed? My, sort of, maybe? You, you might not in this service because we um, pretty much never say it at this worship service. We occasionally say it at the 1030 service, and even then it's not all the time. Well, uh, a number of years ago, I don't know how many at this point, my husband Mark and I were leaving Target on Black Friday. I was reminding my husband of this last night, and he's like, what? We ever went to Target on Black Friday? Well, we did, one year, apparently, because I have it in my notes. <laughs> and he received a phone call from a youth who he had been working with, and she, for some reason, was asking him about the Nicene Creed. <laughs> And he was a little disoriented because it was Black Friday, and he could not come up with the words, right? And so I was trying to help him, and so I, I said, we believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Right, so, and then, Across the row of cars in the parking lot, a voice calls out of all that is seen and unseen <laughs> on Black Friday of all days. And that is the beauty of faith. That creed, I love that creed because, again, we don't say it very often, but it says, not I believe, but we believe. That even when I don't believe or when I can't make sense of faith, we hold one another up in faith. God shows up sometimes when and where we least expect it. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Yesterday afternoon, I attended the installation of Pastor Ellen Critch. 
previously known here among us at Epiphany as Deacon Ellen. And for those of you who didn't know her, she is unique. She's unique. Beautifully unique. Her faith and how she lives into it is exuberant. She'll say the great Thanksgiving, the Lord be with you. <laughs> Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. <laughs> She's just full of energy all the time. None of us have faith like her. Not quite like her. We all experience God's presence differently. But you, my friends, have seen Jesus. You may not recognize the face of Jesus in the face of an eager child or a hungry neighbor or a butterfly. And even if you do not see Jesus, if, even if you do see Jesus, you might not be ready to rejoice in the presence of Jesus. There might be too much pain or hurt or doubt. But Christ is alive among us. And you will do greater works than these. Not because you're so great <laughs> or so faithful, but because God will insist on showing up in this world, in community, in you. Whether you know it right now or not, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Thanks be to God. In Jesus' name, amen. I invite you to sing with us as we consider, as we consider how we give of ourselves and how we give out of what God has first given us, that we might support the good news that God is love.
as we prepare for Jesus' gift for us in Holy Communion, I invite you to rise. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Holy, living, and loving God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your Son to be our Redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who living among us healed the sick and fed the hungry, and with a love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night when he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again after supper took a cup and when he had given thanks he gave it for them all to drink saying this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins do this for the remembrance of me Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and cup. Carry us in your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through him all glory and honor is yours, almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. In your kingdom, remember us, Lord Jesus, and teach us to pray. Our, Our Father, Father, who art, art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Come now to the table of the Lord.
if you will rise, please. May the holy and precious body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go forth into the world in peace. Rise again from the dead. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, help the afflicted, honor all people, cry out for justice, love and serve our living Lord. And Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. and tell the good news that God is love.